Hi, this week's weekly roundup, there's a lot of pie stuff, but also SBCs and a few unusual boards. First up on Kickstarter, we have the Nixie Clock Mark VI, which is, well, a Nixie Clock for all you steampunk people out there. The creator has launched a dozen other Kickstarters, so it seems to be successful. Another small project is the Hub Pi Cam, which contains a USB hub, camera, and case for your Raspberry Pi Zero W. And yet another small one, the Rasp IO, is a bunch of boards in different styles, containing the new APA102 type RGB LEDs, which use an SPI bus rather than a really hard to time quasi serial bus like the WS2812s. They also have a controller hat for the Pi Zero. Might as well continue the Pi theme going on here with the Rasp under control, which is a simple board that provides a power button for your Pi. MonsterBorg is, well, a robot, but this one doesn't want to assimilate anything, at least for now. It aims at the STEM market with a 5 amp motor controller board called the Thunderborg and the 4 wheeled thingy called the MonsterBorg. They claim up to 3 hours runtime running from 37mm zinc motors. Oh, I'm probably saying it wrong. All you need is a Pi, a camera, and 10 AA batteries. The M5 stack is another one of those stackable module STEM products. The core module contains an ESP8266, STM32, 2-inch LCD, Wi-Fi, and SX1278 LoRa in a 5cm square aluminium container. There's a bunch of add-ons that make this a really appealing Kickstarter, like 8-channel logic analyzer, true power measurement, GPS, relays, battery, motor drivers, and power socket. They're all stackable, so pick and choose what you want. Pets has nothing to do with animals, thank goodness, but is another STEM product aiming at teaching kids how to program by using small blocks with commands. It's very similar to others around, but they have come up with a number of curriculums to aid the STEM teacher. Also comes with a guide on how to make your own. The little arm big is essentially the same as the little arm, but it's uh, big. It has all the same specs as its little brother, but can now lift up your Macca's quarter pounder for you. Do we have quarter pounders anymore? I have no idea. Yet another 3D printer, but unlike 90% of them on crowdfunding sites, looks like it does the job. It's expensive, but the word industrial warrants this price tag. It's a two-headed printer, capable of printing 175mm by 315mm by 525mm at 150mm per second, down to 6 microns, and can accept almost any known filament you can throw at it. Did I say it has a 1 kilowatt power supply? It is, after all, industrial. The Fetch It Go is a simple concept, but pretty cool. It's a small whiteboard with a bunch of buttons that can talk to IFTTT, Nest, Hue, and a bunch of other services. You program the buttons using an app on your smartphone. Now, I'm not sure what's inside, but more than likely an ESP8266 or an ESP32. Indiegogo is out of the picture again this week, but Crowd Supply has a simple campaign that provides infrared for your Pi and also connectors for sensors. So it's aimed at people wanting to control their house heating and cooling. A while ago, Atmel launched the SAM A5 series SOC, which contains a Cortex-A5 designed for ultra-low power applications. My RTEC have now released a development board with all the good stuff you expect from an embedded board. It runs the SAM A5 D2 SOC on a sodium with 256 megabytes flash, 256 megabytes DDR3, 65 kilobytes EEPROM, and 100 megabit Ethernet. Like all manufacturer dev boards, it's a little expensive, but boards with a SAM A5 are rare. Whilst over at Element 14, there's an SPC based on the Citara AM335 SOC, which is a dual-core Cortex A8 running at 1 GHz, with all the usual embedded options that you'd expect, with one notable difference, an FPGA expansion interface. Then our friendly ARM friends, have come out with the NanoPi M1 Plus, which adds in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and 1 gigabit Ethernet, but with the loss of one of the USB ports. These days, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are essential for any SPC, so this is a good step for a friendly arm. There's at least one unusual thing on Tindy this week. The Mensch CPU is based on the 6502 series and has a static core, which means you can fully stop the clock and draw only one microamp in this state. It has 64 GPIOs, 4 UARTs, 8 kilobyte ROM, 576 bytes RAM, but with a 16 megabyte address space, and can handle binary or decimal maths. A pretty unusual chip, and good to see a breakout for it. 
There's also the Learn Seabot, which aims at STEM education in robotics. It allows you to program up your robot without having it running away from you and causing carnage by providing buttons and switches on board. Once you're comfortable that your code won't become sentient and take over the world, you can solder everything up. Over at Adafruit, they have the Pi CM3 Lite In, which is the same as the CM3 minus the 4 gigs eMMC, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Of course, they also have the Pi Zero W, that's out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Why is that, I wonder? Over at DigiKey, there's a Max32630 development board, which contains a Cortex M4F, but with only 24 of the 66 GPIOs broken out. It also has onboard Bluetooth, STE 6 dof IMU, and a PMIC providing battery management. This is based off Adafruit's Featherwings. The AK9750 is a sensor capable of detecting a human body regardless of whether it's moving or not, using quantum IR sensors. It's a promising chip, but unfortunately no breakout board exists for it yet. For those people wanting to make a media center using a Raspberry Pi, then this 7.1 surround sound module is probably what you want. The desire to be surrounded by sound comes at a price, but it does contain some pretty decent audio chips, with lots of important acronyms. Or if you want to have it all in a nice case, then you can get the whole thing as a kit. The ESP8285 is a module similar to the ESP8266, but this one contains GPRS as well. Of course, it's useless in countries not supporting 2G anymore. Interesting breakout. The CH376S is a USB storage device chip for ST, TF, hard disk and MMC. Access is by SPI at 2 megabits per second, Parallel at 2 megabits per second, or UART at 3 megabits per second. Supports USB host and device modes, but supports bulk only transfer mode. Over at IC Station, there's a cheap 128 by 64 backlit LCD screen, accessible by I2C. Not sure what chipset they're running on it though. And if you're in need of some simple orientation, then the RPI1031 will detect which way is up for you using two GPIO pins. Whoa, this is a blast from the past. You can pick up an 89C52 breakout, which is based off the ineffable 8051 CPU from the 80s. Or a slightly more modern board, but based off the same architecture. But with some fancy features like power failure detection and integrated Max 810 reset circuitry. Or a Mistmaker. Mistmaker? What? Okay, this one looked interesting and seems to be using a small piezo, but I'm stumped on where it would be used. Anyone have any ideas? I mean, I certainly don't. Anyway, that's it for this week. Is there anything else? Is that all? No? Okay. Well, thanks for watching and see you next week.